The United States is the largest consumer of oil worldwide, consuming double the amount of oil than the set next largest consumer, China. However, we haven't made the switch to biofuels yet because it isn't practical. Second generation biofuel technology is seeking to be cheaper and environmentally friendlier by utilizing industrial plant waste rather than by growing crops. However, industrial plant waste is physically much tougher than crops like corn or sugarcane juice. This is because sugarcane juice or corn is composed of simple sugars, while plant waste is composed of complex sugars, which have to be broken into simple sugars before they can be fermented into ethanol and then used for biofuel. Second generation biofuel technology breaks those uh, complex sugars into simple sugars through a reaction called the securification reaction by utilizing enzymes that are found in nature that naturally decompose plant matter. However, as the reaction currently stands, it isn't cost effective or productive enough for us to make biofuels commercially available. When I analyzed the securification reaction in sugar beet pulp, one of the first things that I evaluated was how much sugar was produced every two hours for the first 48 hours of this reaction. And that data can be shown here. What I found was that most of the sugar is formed in the first 24 hours of the reaction, after which the reaction essentially stops. But all the sugar beet pulp hasn't been converted into sugar. So I sought to optimize this reaction by either making it more cost effective or more productive by trying to identify which factors were tr making this reaction stop at the 24 hour mark. But one of my more important conclusions was that there isn't one single factor that's causing the reaction to stop. For example, we don't run out of sugar beet pulp. We are also not running out of enzymes. It seems like the reaction is much more complicated than that. But one of my more exciting results was that the reaction appears to be self-buffering. What this means is that although the reaction is producing acid, which is potentially detrimental to enzyme activity, this reaction was able to withstand that change in pH. So we were able to eliminate the buffer we were adding at the beginning of the reaction to help maintain pH levels, and that was a reduction in the cost of this reaction. By the end of my project, I had gone from converting 35% of sugar beet pulp into sugars to 66%, which is a 31% increase. And I think that with continued effort and research, we should be able to make the switch to biofuels soon, or at least I hope so. Thank you.